Hey, hi. Uh, good morning or uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Rahul Sudame, and today I'll be talking about uh, the subject change request for right mindset. So let's get started. First of all, uh, you might be thinking, how, what is this topic? You know, change request and an agile that doesn't sound right. You know, typically uh, we have waterfall which is going in one direction where we talk about these terminologies like a sign off of requirements or having a change request or having a change control board and basically controlling any change in the environment. When we are actually uh, working on the requirements, when we have requirements document, we like it to be signed off and then any changes being requested by our customer, by our uh, product owners, we would like to control them. We don't want a lot of changes to happen because in waterfall we uh, go with plan driven approach where we have planned the things based on the requirements in hand. Whereas Agile is going in another direction, Agile Manifesto says we are open to responding to change, uh, we are highly adaptive, we would like to have teams working as self managing. So in this context, uh, what are we talking about? You know, how come change request uh, we are talking about in Agile context? But it is relevant and we definitely need one change request and a very serious one and that is actually for shifting from the waterfall mindset to agile mindset. So when we talk about waterfall mindset, uh, what do we mean about that? So waterfall as it flows in a direction, the thought process also uh, flows in a certain direction. As you can see at the top, uh, waterfall is typically command and control driven where we would have someone driving or running the entire show where um, as you can see that someone is navigating. So basically what, what we are talking about is uh, we would be working on a plan driven approach where uh, we would create a detailed project plan based on the requirements, based on the details that we have with us. Uh, we would like to have as much clarification as possible and then basically uh, we follow a structured approach where we uh, do the requirement clarification, then we do a detailed analysis phase, then we work on a detailed design phase, then we work on uh, the coding or the implementation phase. After that we have an elaborate testing process and after that we follow uh, user acceptance testing process and then we deploy a new product or a new software and production. Uh, the waterfall environment is also hierarchical in nature where we would have actually uh, a project manager or a program manager and then project manager and then team members or we would have team leads and then team members and we of course uh, follow the directions in the top down manner. So when we are working in this environment, when we have to go to an agile environment, suddenly a lot of things change, a lot of new words, a lot of new terminologies, a lot of new process aspects come into place. So what we are talking about is um, instead of a hierarchical model, we are talking about a teamwork. Instead of plan driven model, we are talking about having an iterative model. Instead of command and control model, we are talking about collective ownership. So just to summarize uh, this slide so far, uh, what we are talking about or the theme for today's session is instead of having a waterfall mindset, which is actually a project management driven approach which is about uh, the command and control approach. What we are talking about is building collective ownership. What we are talking about is building iterative planning. What we are talking about is building a teamwork driven environment. And building that uh, involves a lot of efforts and that, that is what we are emphasizing in our session today. Okay, so when you are trying to follow Agile, uh, you would be able to, uh, you will be successful in applying the practices. You would not see a lot of problems in applying the practices. You would be able to set up agile environment, uh, the basic standard scrum practices pretty quickly. You would be able to um, have actually the stand up meetings, the sprint planning, the sprint demo, the sprint retrospection meeting, building product backlog. That would be an easy part that is something that you would be able to apply. That is something you would be able to build environment. But where you will actually face problems is the mindset part and that's a tricky part because when we are applying any new processes, 
we are actually doing a lot of change management. And this will be successful only when people will change their mindset. People build right mindset. That's an extremely important aspect. You will see some of the comments and you might think that some of these comments are fictitious one or something that are uh, that is something that is made up. But that's not the case. These are some of the statements that I have heard on actual projects on the ground. Uh, and that indicates some of the mindset aspect of it. So you would see people uh, mentioning about, oh, you know, we are talking about going agile, but we cannot skip compliance. You know, we are working in an environment where compliance is absolutely important aspect. We cannot skip compliance things. We cannot ignore compliance things. Whether it is healthcare environment, whether it is banking environment, whether it is government or defense environment, uh, people might be thinking that, oh, you know, our environment, our domain needs a lot of compliance. And we cannot skip that. We cannot ignore that. And that's why probably Agile may not work for us. You will hear a lot of those thought process overall in the environment. Uh, you'll also hear uh, some of the thought process that, oh, you know, come on. We cannot uh, ship hardware in phases. The project that we are working on delivers the hardware. Let's say it delivers a storage array. Let's say it delivers some sort of physical devices. And the whole project is about building those devices. So people would naturally think that, uh, you know, we cannot deliver these devices, these hardware pieces in a iterative manner. We have to build the whole hardware as one single holistic piece and only then we can ship it to our customers. We cannot ship bits and pieces of hardware um, or any of such similar products to our customers. Uh, another thought process that you will see is, oh, you know, we have heard about sprint where you do sprint planning, where you create a plan for next two weeks and then you deliver as for that. But the project that we are into is a production support work. We are actually working on L1, L2 and L3 support. So in this kind of context, uh, how is it agile going to work? You know, it doesn't seem relevant to us. Uh, we cannot actually plan for next two weeks. We are working on production support. If we suddenly get something for uh, today and that's a priority one or it's a blocker, we immediately have to focus on that. We have to stop doing anything else and we have to focus on that. That is the highest priority. That's what we have to work on. So any of your sprint planning and those kind of things are not going to work for us. Some people might think that. Uh, you might also think that, hey, you know, uh, if we have a process-driven environment where we need a lot of compliance, checks and balances, it's not going to work for us. Uh, and you will also hear some of the conventional mindset where a project manager might say that, hey, you know, I, as a project manager, I, as a delivery manager, am responsible for delivery. I cannot let the team handle uh, a lot of these things. If the team members are doing all of these things, then of course I would not have a control and that means that I cannot uh, deliver my responsibility which is to take ownership of completing the timelines, meeting the timelines, meeting the deadlines. You will hear a lot of these inputs uh, when you start following the child in your environments. Now let's hear what different roles, what different people think and what could be the thought process from different people's mindset when we are talking about Agile. When we talk about a person uh, called as product owner, what he might be thinking about Agile, especially if there are people who are transitioning to become a product owner. And in conventional model, we would have a lot of business analysts, we might have functional analysts, we might have people who are subject matter experts or domain experts in the respective domain or in the respective platform or in the respective project area. And those people would gradually move to become product owner. Now, when they have been working on uh, building the uh, function specification document, business requirements document, or any kind of uh, detailed requirement documents, they have been spending enough time on building those documents. And that process of collecting the requirements and building a functional specification document, that itself might be three months long effort. And that is a continuous activity where people might say that, hey, you know, building a product backlog is not a casual activity. It needs time. It takes time. You cannot expect me to build a product backlog in just one month and share it with you. You cannot expect me to give you 
next set of user stories very quickly. I can do that. I need enough time to build those user stories, to build that whole product backlog and share it with the team. Uh, and then product managers might also think that, hey, you know, I have a lot of meetings because of Agile. Now, Agile asked me to uh, be present in requirement clarification meeting or store building workshop or requirement clarification workshop or planning poker session or I need to attend the sprint planning every two weeks. I need to attend sprint demo every two weeks. That's too much of time. You know, I cannot give that much time. I have to focus on talking with customers, giving demo to customers, getting requirements from customers, handling customer issues or grievances. I'm already doing a lot of customer facing activities. And now this agile thing is expecting a lot of things out of me. It is asking me to be continuously connected. The agile manifesto and agile principles say that business people and developers work continuously on a daily basis. Now I, I cannot give that much of time commitment. That's not possible for me. So you'll see people with that kind of mindset and that would again be one of the blockers for really building a true agile environment. You might also think uh, where product owners initially, of course, when they are transitioning from business analyst role to a product owner role, they might think that, oh, you know, building a product backlog means I need to take my functional specification document, which is 300 pages document, and just split that into smaller sections and create user stories out of it or call them as user stories. Now, that's not the right uh, thought process. User stories in themselves have a meaning. The reason we call them as user stories, the reason we build them user stories, a reason. We want it to actually work as a card and conversation confirmation. So we want them to be bigger for discussion with the team members. So it needs to be driven with the right mindset. Only then it will be successful. Uh, some of the product owners might also get intrigued uh, by a lot of tools that are coming into picture. Okay, uh, being a product owner, let's say a product owner might be expected to now learn the tools which are required for creating ethics and user stories. So basically tools like Jira, tools like Cucumber, tools like Fitness, so product owners suddenly need to learn all of these tools. In certain environments, product owners might be expected to build acceptance stress driven development. And building acceptance stress driven development means they need to understand, let's say, a working language or they need to understand Cucumber or fitness or those kind of tools. And that might be a little annoying for product owners. They might be thinking that, oh, you know, this Agile thing is asking too much from me. This Agile thing is asking me to uh, learn all of these things. And at this age or at this level or at this role, that's too much. Uh, I am not a technical person. I'm a business person or I'm a domain expert person. And you are asking me to get into a lot of these technical things. And when we are doing a lot of tech, uh, discussions about requirement clarification, uh, product owners might also get dragged into a lot of technical discussions which they may not be comfortable with or they may not like to get into it. Uh, because when we are doing requirement clarification, a lot of that requirement clarification might be related with the technical aspects or the way the things are getting implemented. And that's not something product owner might be comfortable with. So you might see a lot of mindset thing working on that particular angle. When we talk about uh, project managers, then there is a lot of change or the whole role of project managers is changing big way in Agile. And uh, again, uh, project managers, they have to change their mindset in a big, big way for a true Agile environment, for true self-managing teams to be built, to be in place. Uh, project managers, of course, might have different opinion and they might be coming to Agile from different angles. Uh, so first of all, a project manager might think that how is a release possible without a detailed project plan? You know, it will be even difficult for him to imagine that how can we deliver a project without creating a detailed project plan uh, with all the dependencies, with start to finish, end to finish kind of dependencies, the entire Gantt chart being built, and the whole thing's driven based on those Gantt chart and activities and milestones. If you're not doing that, how am I going to vis uh, visualize how my release is going, how my project is going? Am I on track? Am I missing my deadlines? How am I going to get those inputs? That's a challenge. 
the project manager might also think that you know uh, the teams themselves cannot do planning and tracking i mean i am expert into that i have done project management certifications and trainings and i have uh, built a lot of project management tools our organization has a lot of tools and templates for project management uh, team members are of course not aware of that they may not be trained into project management activities so how are they going to do all of these things you know that's that's better done by me than project uh, team members doing the planning activities uh, you might also see that project managers or even many other roles might be a little skeptical and even scared uh, about their role in this whole equation in this whole ecosystem so project manager might think that hey you know scrum talks about only three roles product owner scrum master and team it doesn't depict project manager what does that mean does that mean there is any threat to my role is my job safe in this agile environment so lot of push or lot of resistance might come from this particular threat or this particular thought process or this particular mindset uh, and you will also see a tricky scenario where some of the smart project managers uh, to make sure that they are relevant and contributing this environment might take up roles like product owner or roles like scrum master but if they do not change their mindset then what might happen is a project manager becoming a scrum master and trying to implement agile his way and if he continues to be command and control if he continues to be a dictatorial mindset person that we are going to have lot of problems and that certainly going to be a big big blocker in implementing agile in a right way so when we are talking about building agile and building true agile we have to deal with lot of these mindset changes and it's a big big mind shift that we need to apply before we can actually think of a right and a true agile environment uh when we think about architects they are also coming from a different angle architects um, have been used to having a detailed design phase architecture phase where architects actually analyze the requirements in depth then they build uh, the architectural blueprint or high level design low level design detailed architecture then it goes through series of reviews it goes through series of sign offs and approvals and then basically the development can start uh, architects again uh, might think that oh you know uh, agile talks about rapid cycles agile talks about building things quickly that means uh, it's it's actually recommending or it's talking about skipping design and architecture that's not right that's not uh, something we want to do that's not something that can work in any environment uh, they might also think that how is it possible to build something without having the high level design low level design detailed architecture and approval of that uh, so of course have you got sign off on the design before starting with coding we need to have architectural sign off you cannot just go and start coding and building something that is not in line with the organizational architectural recommendations uh, or you might also see another thought process where uh, the designers or architects might say that oh you know let's do uh, this agile thing in a different way we will have sprint 1 only for requirement clarification sprint 2 only for design and architecture building sprint 3 for design and architecture sign off and sprint 4 and 5 for coding and then sprint 6 and 7 for testing now that's not a right agile environment that's not a true agile environment uh, we would like it to work iteratively we of course would need uh, enough architecture done we of course need enough design done before any implementation activities are uh, taken up but that does not mean that we uh, should be spending time on it for two months three months four months and building a very detailed design and which changes very rapidly in next two sprints so with that we have to keep in mind that we have to have the right balance between the detail of design and the flexibility of incorporating the changes that are coming from our product owners or customers so again there is a mind shift change that we need to apply uh, at this stage when we talk about developers developers are also getting through lot of transition developers are going through lot of changes and um, there are a lot of new things that are getting introduced for developers 
So they would be looking at it from a different angle, from a different perspective. Uh, in some cases, if Agile is not applied right, then there would be a lot of issues or repercussions or problems that might happen. Uh, I have seen some environments where the project managers or scrum masters insist that you have taken up these stories for current sprint and you have to finish it in the current sprint even if we have got a, a scenario because of which the stories efforts have increased now uh, but the team but the scrum masters might say that hey you know we have to finish it in current sprint that's what agile says that's what scrum says so you if that means you need to put extra efforts you need to work on weekends you need to work late evenings you have to do that but you have to finish it in the current sprint itself now that would result in a lot of night outs and uh, midnight midnight oil being burned for team members and they may not be happy about it I have seen such environments where uh, forcing a child in a wrong way can result into a lot of overhead and lot of burnout for the team members and then they may not like it they may not appreciate it or they may not think they might think that this is adding a lot of overhead to me uh, another thing that I have seen developers thinking that now actually I need to do design I need to do coding I need to have unit testing which means I might have to write unit tests then make sure that they are getting compiled or integrated on continuous integration environment if the continuous integration environment or build is broken I immediately have to spend time on that I have to do code reviews uh, I have to make sure that if there are any defects found in whatever I have done in the current sprint uh, any feedback is coming from testers I need to incorporate that in the same sprint and I need to update tools like Jira or Rally or any other uh, version or any other project management agile uh, lifecycle management tool that we are using and all of those things need to be done in the same sprint so a lot of people might think that this is a lot of overhead for me I'm already uh, focusing on my coding and now, now I have to make sure that I attend a lot of meetings I do design coding testing everything in the same sprint incorporate the feedback now that's too much actually I am getting stretched because of that uh, because of this thought process there might be one problem that would happen where team members might think that oh you know uh, my my scrum master is forcing me to finish this story so let me finish this story anyhow what that means is if, if that means I need to take any shortcuts I'll do that but I'll just get this story done I will just finish the story which means if I have to skip unit testing, if I have to skip code reviews, if I have to skip the basic design practices or building the right design or architecture, I might do that but I'll just get the story done. I'll just push it to uh, testing team members and let them figure out the defects instead of me worrying about it because I cannot actually uh, get that much time. Let me just get it off to the other party. Uh, and you might also think that developers might think that oh you know there are too many meetings in Agile I, I have to attend the requirement clarification meeting if there is a sprint plea planning meeting sprint planning meeting I have to have a daily stand up meeting I need to do sprint demo prepare for sprint demo I need to have sprint retrospection meeting so when I'm doing so many meetings when I'm going to get time for doing my coding you know I'm just spending my time on doing all sorts of meetings and this is not really giving me enough time to do coding which is what I like so you might see some sort of mindset or some sort of thought process coming from uh, development team members when we think about uh, testing team members they also would have their views and uh, preconceived notions and thoughts especially if the team members have worked only in waterfall environment earlier and now they are being asked to work in agile environment they might think that oh you know a lot of things are imposed on me and that's not uh, something that I'm used to that's not something I'm comfortable with that's not something I would uh, like to do in this way uh, one of the things QA team members or testing team members might think that developers are just throwing new builds at me every now and then every day they are uh, having new build on Jenkins and sometimes those new builds are getting pushed onto my QA environment 
there is some sort of trigger which automatically deploys new build on uh, QA environment. So I started testing something. I started testing a new build which was given to me yesterday. I'm halfway done with the testing of that build and suddenly now a new build is deployed on this environment. So all the testing that I have done uh, from yesterday is now in vain because I cannot actually start from rest of the test cases where I left off yesterday because I don't know if there has been any regression introduced in whatever scenarios I tested yesterday. So I as a QA team member, I'll have to start it from scratch. I'll have to start it from my test case one. And this is happening so rapidly that it's actually becoming uh, a lot tedious. Uh, you might also think that uh, there is a lot of shift happening for QA team members, their role, their skill set expectations as well. Uh, automation is one of the very key driver in agile environment. Uh, with so much rapid development happening, Agile emphasizes on having right unit testing, right amount of sanity testing, uh, all uh, automation things, whether it is UI automation, API automation, or any other kind of automation. And the QA team members are nowadays expected to have the automation skills. Just having manual testing experience may not be enough. The QA team members might be expected to have automation as one of the prerequisites or they might be asked to take up some other role or some other work or even might be asked to go in some other organization. So there is a lot of change happening in the job and the job requirement itself for testing team members. Uh, another tricky thing that happens for testing team members specifically is they have multiple managers now suddenly. You know, we have a conventional testing manager or QA manager. Uh, now they have to actually sit with the development team members at integral part of the project team. So that team has a project manager. There is also a scrum master who is driving the daily standups and things on a day to day basis. So whom should I listen to? Who is my real boss? Who is going to give me the directions? Or if I have questions, if I have difficulties, whom should I go and talk with? Do I go and talk with QA manager or project manager or scrum master? Who's, who's going to give me directions or who's going to give me answers for my queries? And that's a tricky question. Uh, and it again depends on how you implement a child. Uh, another thing that QA team members face is, oh, you know, I cannot complete writing test scenarios, doing requirement clarification, writing detailed test cases, executing the test cases, then the uh, log defects, then when developers give me new build, again do the whole set of testing and verify that the defects are closed, there is no regression, uh, and doing the testing in the same sprint in which the development is going on, that's not possible, that's not going to work for me. You know, I, I cannot do this. There are so many things happening within just two weeks. So it's not possible for us, or it's not something that I can do in such a short span of time. So there might be um, a lot of mindset that you will see, for testing team members where they might think that you know there is too rapidly things are happening new builds are coming every now and then whatever I have been testing so far suddenly gets thrashed out and I have to again start from scratch so that's too much of an overhead for me. Uh, when you think about customer the customer has another angle to it. When we ask a customer to build a product backlog because in services environment we would actually be talking with the customer and Agile says that customer should build a product backlog and give us a product backlog. When we ask that to customer, customer might say, come on, you know, I, I don't have time to build these epics and user stories and this whole structure for you. I'll tell you my what my requirements are and you guys can do it the way you want. I, I don't have time to create this whole concept called as product backlog and all of that. Another thing that we've seen is many of the customers would demand the project to be executed in Agile environment. They might say that, hey, you know, I want my project to be executed as an Agile project, primarily because I see updates uh, very regularly, primarily because I actually can raise change requests and team members would be open for that. So I don't have to raise a formal change request anymore. I don't have to pay extra for the changes that I want. Uh, so basically, uh, we'll continue. So uh, the customer might say that my environment demands that the project be delivered with fixed timelines, fixed uh, 
price, but since it is an agile project, I would not have to raise a change request. If I want changes, I would actually share it with the team members and they have to deliver it. Uh, I have also seen uh, some of the cases, the customers really getting disturbed uh, with the time that is expected from them because they have their business priorities, they are working on their uh, market response and all those things. And when the team members say that, hey, you know, you have to be for the sprint demo every two weeks, you have to be for the sprint planning every two weeks, they might think that, oh, you know, you're asking too many things from me. You're asking me to spend time for every two weeks and even be available regularly throughout the sprint cycle to respond to your request. That might be too much. You know, I may not have that much time uh, to give it to you. Uh, on top of that, on top of these different people, different roles with different mindsets, we also have to understand that there are a lot of agile failure modes which basically contribute uh, to agile environment not being built successfully. And again, uh, for not implementing agile in wrong ways, you need to have people with right mindset. Okay, so it is very commonly seen that people just follow agile practices but they are not aware of agile principles or values. So it is very important that all the team members from leadership to the team members, all of them understand the agile principles, they understand the agile values and they make sure that whatever they are implementing, it is in line with the agile manifesto, it is in line with agile principles. So it is not just enough that you, you conduct stand up and you conduct sprint planning and you conduct sprint demo, that means you are agile. If you are actually deviating, if you are not executing your stand-ups or your uh, demos or retros in line with the agile manifesto, then you may not get the outcome that is expected from this whole agile adoption. Uh, it is also a very common thing that a lot of people, a lot of organizations tailor scrum environment, but when they tailor it, uh, they might be tailoring it to the extreme, which is also referred as scrum but which means they might be creating their own variation. But if that variation is actually done to the extreme, then we completely might lose out the essence of Agile. We might completely lose out the benefit or the core value of Agile. Uh, you might also see the one of the very core aspect of Agile is continuous improvement. We have to do retrospection and we have to discuss what is working well, what is not working well and how we can improve on those things. So to do that, uh, we need to have retro meetings very effectively. It is it is observed that some of the team, uh, teams do not conduct retro meetings or the meetings are not effective. Either there is no outcome, there are no tangible action items or those action items are not tracked so things are not improving. Then we are not doing things in the right way. Uh, it might also be the case where Agile is imposed on the team, which means the senior executives, the management has told the team members that guys we are going to follow agile so all of you have to follow these practices all of you will have to do these things so this is going to be your role this is going to be the process and you guys just have to follow it if we do it in that way then it may not be successful people may not appreciate it people might think that this is imposed on them or forced on them and then they may not connect with that if the organization's culture um, is not supporting the change that Agile demands, then that again is a problem. That again is one of the failure mode. That again uh, would actually not support Agile to be built in the right way. Uh, another thing is organizations might have a lot of compliance things, a lot of control measures, metrices, uh, project management office or program management office or governance mechanism to make sure that the things are built in the right way, the project is on track, the, the legal obligatory things are being taken care of. But if those things are taken to the extreme, then that might actually uh, become anti-agile or that might become blockers to agile. So all those compliance things are required, uh, but the organization has to be sensitive that we should apply the required compliance things but they should not be applied to an extent where they completely take away the essence of Agile. In that case, you're not going to get any benefit. You might be creating something just for the compliance sake, 
and then you may not be delivering the value which is expected out of your agile implementation you might also see that if there is a lack of collaboration then we may not get the right agile implementation it is very common thing to have different uh, vendors or different team members or different people from different locations different geographies and this demands a lot of collaboration this demands a lot of people working together and we need to build that environment of collaboration otherwise it's not going to be successful uh, another thing is uh, people might implement agile in the wrong way or people might uh, understand agile or interpret agile in a wrong way and that creates a lot of confusion problem and issues people might think that oh you know agile means no documentation agile means no design agile means we can ignore some of the other engineering best practices now that's not what we mean by agile that's not what is expected and that is something that's going to create problems and people would blame agile for that than anything else so we need to be uh, sensitive about that now if we have a product owner if we have a project manager or a delivery manager or if we have a scrum master uh, who are working in agile environment but they continue with their command and control style where they like to take all the decisions where they would like to uh, take decisions on behalf of the team where they would like to impose their thoughts their views their expectations on the team then we are not really going to build a true self managing team and then uh, the team members motivation is not going to be high so it is important that all these people who are playing key roles really exhibit the right mindset the right management style for the team to be effective another thing is if you implement agile in a wrong way where you are actually working on features and stories after stories after stories every sprint but you are not taking care of your technical debt if you are not taking care of your defects that are getting built up with this sprint execution cycle then you may not be able to deliver it to production you might be actually building a huge technical debt because of which you have to have a huge cycle at the end of regression testing where you have to spend a lot of time on fixing defects and only after that you would be able to push it to production so you need to build a mechanism where the defects that are getting generated are getting resolved in line with the whole process uh, so it is easier said than done so when we talk about agile mindset there are multiple things that are involved we talk about servant leadership we talk about uh, the managers or people who are in the executive roles or in the management role they need to actually work with their team members to help them to support them to facilitate them rather than dictate them that's a big thing and it is easier to say the words like servant leadership or adaptive management style but it's very very difficult to implement those things in a proper way uh, you might also see that people have to build a lot of skills so skills like active listening you need to listen to each other you need to listen to your customer you need to listen to your product owners or even to different team members so you need to build a lot of skills uh, to support or to get into this environment you have to have effective brainstorming techniques that they are being valued their opinion on requirements on estimations on testing on engineering practices is valued and only then you will see that team members feel empowered otherwise they are not going to feel empowered so all these characteristics are important and all of these things look nice words but they take a lot of efforts to build these characteristics so uh, one thing we need to understand that transforming to agile is not easy it's not a casual affair we need to put efforts in that as you see in this slide uh, if you don't change anything then something magical is not going to happen if you want agile to give you the right uh, outcome if you want it to build faster cheaper better way of deliveries if you want to give uh, the high value requirements the prioritized requirements to your customer if you want to reduce your cycle time if you want to reduce your technical debt then you need to put some efforts if you are not changing anything if you are not changing mindset if you are not changing processes then nothing magical is going to happen uh, out of somewhere so it really needs serious efforts we need to spend a lot of serious efforts uh, one of the thing the management team needs to do is to make sure that 
the whole team understands the rationale behind going agile and it needs to be discussed and team members should be understanding that or agreeing to that so uh, the senior executives need to tell their team members what is the reason we have chosen agile what is the business rationale for going agile why we need to go agile the benefits of that and when team members understand the benefit of that then they would be more receptive then they would be participating in it they would be into it otherwise they would always think that this is something that is imposed by management and that's not relevant for our organization or that's not going to work in our context so i'm going to be switched off from it or i'll just follow blindly whatever is told to me that's not what we want uh, the senior management really plays a key role all the uh, cxos the vp of engineering uh, the directors they really play an important role they have to continuously work with their management team they have to continuously work with their engineering team as well as the customer team or product owner team all the impacted parties all the different groups who are involved in this whole exercise they need to tell them continuously that this is an organizational direction and we have a reason why we have chosen this we are serious about it whatever efforts are required whatever process changes are required whatever organizational changes are required we are ready to support that we are ready to make any investment that is required for building continuous integration for building automation for building skill sets for conducting training we are ready to help you out and it is important to have continuous and serious change management exercise implementing agile is not just implementing practices it's a big change management exercise that we have to apply on the ground uh, the management team also needs to build effective support systems like they need to conduct a lot of training at all different levels make sure people understand what agile means what agile values and principles are and how they are relevant in that specific organization's context you might have to uh, take help from internal or external coaches who can help implement the correct environment uh, you might also want to build any internal communities of practice or center of excellence which can discuss about how agile is being implemented in within the organization share best practices among the teams if one team is doing something interesting share it with other team members and that also builds some sort of peer pressure as well as a forum for building best practice sharing so in this summary what i would like to uh, share with all of you is right mindset is absolutely absolutely needed for a success of agile if you are just following practices uh, we may not get the right environment if we change the mindset then we would see the value then we would see the outcome that we are expecting out of it for that people at all levels people with all different roles people with all different skill sets and people with all different environments or teams or locations they need to be understanding agile properly they need to understand the rationale behind some of the recommendations and they need to participate in it wholeheartedly so first of all if we are talking about words like uh, servant leadership adaptable leadership then management team needs to model the desired behavior we cannot just go and tell the team members that guys you need to be agile that's not going to work he himself also needs to be agile everyone in the organization needs to be agile for anyone else uh, to become agile or it's not just going to help otherwise it is important that management team creates and communicates a common vision common vision about why we are following agile as well as uh, what is the vision of the release or product or the project that we are working on so that all the team members feel connected with it so it's important that we take them uh, and make sure that they are connected with it the next question um, or the next thing that is important is willingness to challenge the status quo organization might be working in a certain way organization might be delivering things in a certain way and agile is expecting us to change the status quo so people should be willing to change that people should be open to try new things whether agile will work in my environment whether agile will work in my technology area whether agile will work in my domain people should build that openness to really try it out and if they try it out they can figure out that the agile can work in different domains different technological platforms different environments it is possible 
provided then uh, you are actually willing to change the status quo, you are willing to try new things, experiment with it and then do continuous improvement. And it is also important that we empower and encourage team members. Team members should feel that, hey, you know, my management team is supporting me, my colleagues are supporting me, my other peer team members are helping me or we all are working together, my opinion matters, my opinion counts. All of those things are related with mindset and it is really, really important to build right mindset for agile environment to succeed. And that is why I say that uh, what we really, really need is a change request for changing the mindset of all the people involved in the agile environment. Only if we apply that change request, only if we apply change in the mindset, then we would be able to build the right environment and then we would be able to see the benefits that we are expecting for from the Agile environment. That is what I wanted to share. Now, if you have any questions, uh, we have a few minutes where we can take the questions and <coughs> we can discuss about those. Yeah. <coughs> uh, hi, Rahul. I have uh, got some questions uh, while uh, you were presenting, but I wanted to take it uh, at the end. So I okay. will uh, read it out for you. Rajeshri has asked the question, how do we exactly change the uh, mindset? Okay, uh, so now when you want to change the mindset, uh, you have to apply different change management uh, practices. So first thing is we need to make people aware about what is Agile or what is right Agile. Okay, first of all, they need to understand it. So if they do not understand it, then they are going to coming, they are going to come up with a lot of questions on half-heartedness into it. So once they understand that Agile is not saying that you skip documentation, you skip design, it is saying that build whatever is relevant and be ready to iterate over it. Uh, so that's one thing. First, we need to make sure that people understand what is Agile. Second thing is we need to train uh, the team members or discuss the, with them and tell them what is the rationale for that particular company, that particular organization to take up Agile. Third thing what they need to do is they need to conduct some sort of workshops for all the different stakeholders to discuss about how to implement Agile in that organization's context. And in that kind of workshop, you will also see that people opening up with their apprehensions, with their uh, doubts, with their thoughts and suggestions as well. Now that's something would actually prepare you uh, for getting there. Once you start following Agile, Senior management team, as I mentioned in my previous slide, senior management team needs to continuously tell people that Agile is our focus, this is the direction that we have taken, we are going to go in this direction and there is a reason behind that, so we expect everyone to support. It's not something out of whims and fancies, it's not going to fall off. And next thing is we need to have some people who are playing role of coach. It could be internal or it could be external who would identify the mindset uh, which is coming in the implementation of Agile. So when someone says that, oh, you know, uh, a manager or a scrum master is trying to influence a stand-up meeting or he is trying to dictate a retrospection meeting, then there would be uh, the coach who can make sure and tell that, hey, you know, we are supposed to help the team, support the team, not dictate. So when we build this kind of ecosystem, then we would be able to make sure that uh, people change their mindset, they understand what is the right mindset and then they support in the environment uh, in the organization. Okay. Uh, another question, um, we have a few more. Uh, Swamijit Sarkar has asked a question, uh, can you share some examples of uh, agile failure modes? Yeah, sure. So like I mentioned, uh, there are multiple of the failure modes where um, I have seen people just following the practices. So for example, people um, saying that, hey, you know, we are doing stand-up. So Agile says, have stand-up, we are doing stand-up. But when you go and enter the stand-up meeting, you will see that it's actually becoming a status reporting, where the manager is actually looking at each of the team members, asking them the status, and the team members are looking at him and providing the status and manager challenging them. or saying why this is not done, what is happening, why it takes so, so long and all of that. So then uh, you know that this is a failure mode. You know, we are not going in the right direction. We are not letting the team to work as a self-organizing team. 
this is being dictated by the team, by the management uh, guys. So management could be scrum masters, could be product owners, or could be uh, project managers. But if you see command and control, that's definitely one of the failure modes. So again, I'll come back to the point that when you see that people are just blindly following practices, but not following principles, uh, then you will see a lot of these failure modes where uh, the, the culture is not built and where people are following or working in the same hierarchical mode. Some of the failure modes that I mentioned earlier is people say that we are doing sprints, but what they are doing is one sprint only for requirement analysis, next sprint only for uh, design, third sprint only for coding and things like that. So that means you are not really sticking on track or following the agile in a true core way. Uh, Rahul, another question was, how do we handle the compliance thing? This is a question from Vishant Sanghvi. How do we handle compliance thing? And I don't know sure. what uh, it means. Yeah. Okay, sure. So, uh, Vishant, uh, so compliance things are important, and we cannot skip uh, the compliance things. Uh, but what I am trying to tell, or the point that I am trying to arrive at, is we should make sure that the required compliance things are followed, but they do not become a blocker to implementing Agile. For example, if an organization is CMMI level 5 organization, or if the organization is ISO certified organization, or if the organization is in uh, compliance driven domains such as healthcare, where you might have HL7 or HIPAA compliance, you might be in environments like banking where you're dealing with financial data, so you have to go through compliance things. So there would be uh, certain compliance expectations that you might have to meet. Uh, the right way to do it is embed those compliance things in the part of the process, but embed in a such a way where it does not become anti-agile. For example, uh, the compliance requires you to have some sort of agreement that this is the scope of the release. So that is something that you can do. But for that, you don't have to create a very 200 page long uh, functional specification document and get a signed off. You can build a product backlog in Jira or Rally or version one or what kind of whatever tool you're using and have a version assigned to it which tells you that this is the backlog that I have for the release. Uh, some of the compliance might need that before you deploy anything on production, for example, like financial uh, environment, you might have to put it in a secluded environment, which is not directly accessible to developers and testing team. So some third party or another pair of eyes are looking at it, uh, validating that it is complying to the required norms, and then it goes to production. So you can follow those compliance things. Uh, but in that case, what you can do is you can make it part and parcel of your whole process and uh, embed it in an agile manner without disturbing the core values and principles of agile. Okay. Uh, another question, same from Guru Prasad. Is it a requirement to write a test cases using Excel and report the test reports part of the sprint? Okay. Uh, so uh, what Agile basically says is whatever uh, features are getting developed, they should be tested in the, in the same iteration as much as possible and feedback being given to the development team members. It does not necessarily dictate you uh, to follow a certain testing methodology. So one of the change I have seen in Agile environments is in the conventional uh, way, we build actually test plan, test strategy, then we create detail, uh, test scenarios, and out of test scenarios, we create detailed test cases. We get the sign off on those test cases, and then we actually uh, have some sort of test case management tool where all those test cases are entered and test plans are created, and then they are executed. Uh, one of the change I have seen is uh, the testing team members creating test scenarios rather than test cases or detailed test cases. What I mean by that is uh, when we have defined a user story, testing team members might create test scenarios, get an agreement from product owner as well as the development team members, and then run them against the user story, validate it, and provide a feedback. Uh, now, this is a lightweight approach. Uh, we are not skipping any core requirements of the user story. 
but at the same time we are not spending let's say two weeks or three weeks on building detailed test cases which very quickly might change because the requirement itself has changed in the next sprint. So again we build some sort of iterative nature there and whatever is the right level of detail we can incorporate but what I have practically seen is uh, people building test scenarios, validating the user stories based out of that and then providing feedback to the team members when the iterative sprints are going on. We might also have a regression testing um, as a far end of the release where we have some hardening sprints to do the complete integration testing and uh, regression testing before the product is uh, shared out or deployed to the production. Okay, another question from Yogesh. Um, in my organization, agile practice is enforced only when customer asks for that. So for the projects which are running in waterfall, it becomes difficult to implement this kind of practice. How should we handle this situation? Sure. Yeah. So uh, the need for Agile or the trigger for Agile would be different in services organizations and in product based organizations. In product based organizations, the product management team or the senior executives team would take a decision to follow Agile and the entire company, the entire product development organization would start following Agile. In service based environment, it depends on the customer that we are working with. Uh, the customer might demand Agile in some cases or in some other cases the customer might not be aware of Agile or might not insist on Agile or he himself might be a waterfall shop. Uh, so in that case what we have been doing and this is now becoming a best practice or recommendation is before you start any new project it is recommended that you discuss the process model or working model with your customer. Uh, and it is important uh, to have that kind of agreement you, with your customer. And then uh, in some cases the customer, if it is completely expecting to follow waterfall, even in that case, uh, what I have seen is some of the organizations, service based organizations who understand the benefit of Agile, they lay out a basic working model. They say that, okay, you don't want a full fledged Agile or Scrum or Safe or Kanban to be followed, that's fine. But what we would like to use is some of the best practices of Agile. Which means that after every two weeks, we would schedule a call with you where, where we would show you a demo of what all things we have done in the last two weeks. If you have any inputs, you can give those inputs to us and we will tell you what, what all things we are going to do in the next two weeks. So instead of waiting for the demo to happen after every three months, or the customer to get exposure to the functionality only during the UAT phase, you can build iterative nature even in waterfall environment. And I have seen uh, that to be extremely successful model and that is what we have applied in many of the projects. So the, uh, the projects where the customer explicitly demanded, we definitely followed Agile. But even in the environments where customer did not ask for Agile, we proactively told the customer that we would follow some of the best practices of Agile environment where we would expect the customer or we would engage the customer to be involved iteratively and frequently in the cycle. And that is what actually helped us in the long run. Okay, thanks. I mean, there are quite a few, so we will take uh, two or three more uh, and then the remaining, I'm not sure if there is any platform, Rahul, where uh, you can answer those, uh, maybe on Discuss Agile. But I'll take sure. a couple of more questions and then we will conclude. Uh, this is from Divakar. Uh, with change in mindset and focus is on one team, titles like PM, BA, ETC really doesn't matter. How to convince the management on this paradigm shift on responsibility shifts from individual, uh, I mean role-based individuals to team? Sure. So, um, like I said, it is important for the organization to uh, make sure that all the different stakeholders understand why we are following Agile in the first place. Um, and uh, of course some of the parameters like the customer would benefit from it, the delivery team would benefit because they would get uh, really quick feedback from the customers. So whatever they would build is relevant from the customer and whatever they are building the chances of that getting rejected reduces because they are continuously showing it to customer and getting uh, feedback from him. 
So uh, those are, that is the rational, that is how the organization would benefit, that is how the customer would benefit. So rational needs to be shared first. Second is uh, there needs to be some sort of mechanism and I have seen that building some sort of training and having discussion workshops uh, for making sure that the, the people involved understand what is true agile, what is right agile and how do we build that? What all things are required for that to be successful? Then you continuously uh, enforce the same message through senior management and then you use environments like training, coaching, building community of practices, some sort of review mechanism where you check whether team members are doing it in a right way. Uh, if there are specific incidences where some people are still exhibiting uh, not so correct behavior, then talk with them, coach them, uh, help them understand the right way of doing things and again make sure that they are following it in a correct way is important in the whole process. Okay, the last question and the others we will park it and maybe find some ways to answer. But the last question from Pratik. Uh, you talked sure. about test teams reporting, reporting hierarchy as whom should they report to. This happens to development team as well. They may not report to Scrum Master. How do we handle that? Correct. And this is a very common uh, thing that we've observed on the ground because uh, development team members are working with project managers as well as scrum masters. For QA team members along with those two, they also have to work with QA managers. Uh, and that sometimes can become conflicting because you might get three different messages from three different people or three different directions. So how do we handle that? Uh, and that's again one of the mindset uh, question that depends on how people are exhibiting this behavior or have they understood these roles in a proper way. For example, if the project manager uh, needs to understand that I actually uh, am supposed to help the team to build the environment which is self-managing, I'm not going to work as a command control mechanism, uh, the scrum master also needs to understand the same where he is not running the show or he is not uh, directing or dictating them. Uh, and the team members are not reporting to him or he is not the one who is necessarily going to conduct the appraisals uh, for them. So that, that is something that needs to be understood. When there are those two roles that are existing like project manager and scrum master, uh, the scrum master and project manager again needs to have some sort of working agreement that when it comes to any scrum ceremonies like uh, conducting the sprint, the daily stand-up meeting, facilitating the sprint demo, retro, uh, planning meetings, making sure that the product backlog is in place is handled by Scrum Master. So anything which is related with the Scrum aspects is handled by Scrum Master. Anything which is related with delivery aspects or organizational compliance needs can be handled by project manager. So project manager is definitely uh, responsible for hiring and firing decisions for making sure that the budget is available for the team, making sure that required training uh, and other support, the tools, the investment that the team needs is in place and whatever additional support is needed, whether it is resolving blockers, whether it is uh, handling the impediments, so whatever support the team needs, uh, is available for that. So if the project manager and the scrum masters build understanding of these two roles, and they build the mindset that we are here to help the team, we are here to support the team, then those conflicts will not happen and then we will be able to build the environment in much better way. Okay. I think before we conclude one more because I found that question uh, to be inter interesting. Uh, it's Rupesh who says Agile is an iterative model and do we need to do uh, automate the test cases? How does it help? Okay, um, so in Agile, uh, what is happening is the team members are building something iteratively. Team members are building something very rapidly. Okay, so I'm building something in Sprint 1 and then I'm working on next set of functionalities, next set of user stories and Sprint 2 and Sprint 3 and Sprint 4. So things are happening every Sprint. There is something new that is getting developed every Sprint. And one of the very practical thing for QA team members is that they cannot run entire regression testing every sprint because sprint durations are very short. It could be two weeks or three weeks of duration. In that cycle, 
uh, whatever new features are getting developed, it will not be practically possible for the development, uh, the QA team members to run the recreation. And that is where automation comes into place. And when we talk about automation, uh, there is a book called as uh, Agile Testing by Lisa Atkins, where you will see that there is an Agile Testing Quadrant, where it talks about testing just does not mean, or automation just does not mean, automation that is done by QA team members on UI automation. There are multiple layers of automation, and all the team members need to do automation at different levels, which, which basically would contribute to the quality of the project. So the development team members need to do automation, uh, which could be unit test or API test. Uh, the QA team members might have to build automation for sanity test automation, UI automation, uh, integration automation, and then automation of performance and some of the other aspects. So the reason why automation is important in agile environment is because of the iterative nature, where things are getting built every every week, every two weeks, and we want to make sure that whatever new things are getting built are not breaking whatever was working earlier. That is the reason we would create automation and integrate it uh, with continuous integration environment so that the quality validation can happen in an automated way as much as possible. So that whenever I'm building something new, before even I give it to QA, it runs through automation and the issues, the defects can be identified sooner and developers can verify that those set of issues are not broken uh, or those set of scenarios are still working fine. And if there is something that is broken, I better fix it before giving a build to QA. So it is recommended that we don't uh, give a build to QA and that as blockers, that's going to be a waste of time for QA team members as well. So that is why it becomes one of the triggers in Agile environment. Okay. Uh, I think we will conclude. Uh, this uh, just, just before concluding, I just wanted to uh, share with all the team members that uh, we would uh, encourage you to join uh, the event that is being organized by Discuss Agile Network which is Discuss Agile Day, uh, which is a one-day event, one-day conference, which is for learning and networking on Agile-related aspects, where you will be able to hear a lot of uh, inputs like this and many more, and earn uh, eight SEUs for team members interested in going through their journey on uh, Scrum Alliance. It is on 22nd November in Pune, and uh, the URL is mentioned where you can get more inputs. If you have any query, queries or anything you would like to know about today's topic, you can write to me or you can uh, post it on Discuss Agile uh, forum and we would be glad to share uh, the inputs with you. Thank you. I hope uh, this session added some value to you. Yeah. Thank you, Rahul. I'm also getting a lot of uh, thanks from the team members and they have really appreciated uh, the knowledge that they have received. Thank you all for joining and thank you, Rahul, for your time. So, Sure. Thank you. Good day to everyone.